Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to the Q&A. If you're looking for the old table of contents and where your question may come in at this point in time, I'm simply just clicking into the press conference and going from top to bottom in terms of where they appear. So hopefully that should help you out. I'm not printing them off anymore. It seems to take a bit too long. So I've just got the laptop in front of me and just smacking them out right there. So hopefully that gives you some sort of an idea of when you might come into the uh, fray. But look, I am, as I said last week, trying to condense these answers a little bit and not waffle on too much or else we'll be getting videos in excess of an hour. So I'm hoping to keep these sort of 25, 30 for my own sake as well because I don't want to be, you know, sitting here for an hour or so and waiting for the video to upload for ages as well, but also for you guys to, you know, not be sifting through an enormous amount of content so anyway thanks for all the comments plenty coming through again so if i don't thank you individually of course you guys know i appreciate it so first up we've got galacho nine merit gives me aids well look that's pretty brutal to start us off but yeah look fair enough he's uh fairly painful at the moment if you are a merit owner i can't blame you there white shadow feeling for you when i saw salem done up yeah i know it's I almost felt like he would. I, I just, you know, like every reason to trade him out, clearly, when he served up those first two weeks, it's an absolute correct decision. But I just thought, no, oh, just do it. Just give me like a 75, mate, because I've still got him in draft. I was like, don't turn up. And sure enough, he turns up. But, you know, that's just the uh, game of super coach, isn't it, mate? It's It can sometimes be funny like that. Um, Gruffy, did you take in Cornelio? Trade in Cornelio, like I suggested, Shorty. Plenty of cheap points up for grabs, mate. Nah, sorry, Gruffy. No mid prices in the midfield, mate. Yeah, a bit of sarcasm there from old Gruffy, mate. No, I see where you're coming from, mate. And yes, I think I will most definitely bring Cornelio in this week. I understand where you're coming from, but it's an opinion business. And look, you know, Cornelio's gone much better than I anticipated. So nicely done there, mate. I don't get them all right. But um, moving on to Steve. Hey, Shorty, scored terrible, 2,116 with Billings and Brayshaw, 32, letting me down the most. Um, he says, you could have VC'd anyone after Friday night. If you started Orlando on the field, you would have gotten Gorn scores as emergency while still having the option to change your C around before the West Coast game. Yeah, no, that's a good point, mate. I, yeah, just hadn't, didn't really think of that at the time, to be fair. So, yeah, no, that's a good point and um, something to have a think about um, in the future. Yeah, just... Probably didn't, um, yeah, think that one through as much as uh, as yourself. But um, moving on to Sluggy, do I trade Billings, Robbie Gray? Stuck with Hibbert and Bont, worrying sides with him spending the game as a permanent forward. And the Ruck, 16 touches. If the Dogs don't play well, which looks like they won't this year, Bont won't deal well. Yeah, well, I'm with you there. I'm extremely concerned as a Bont owner. I mean personally i think i'm going to trade him out and and look i don't like to trade premiums people know that if they've listened to me for some time i really like him as a midfield option i think he's dynamic he's strong in the contest but if he's spending time forward as you say in a poor doggy side then that's extremely concerning from a bloke that we are hoping for 110 plus so Personally, my advice would be get rid of him before he drops, and I'll be going Cornelio. In terms of your other questions, I'd keep the faith with Billings, and look, I'd keep the faith with Hibbert as well. He scored a 92. Yeah, his role is definitely, I don't know if it's changed or whether he's just out of form a bit. I haven't watched enough Melbourne games in its entirety to know, but... Yeah, look, I, I'd be definitely keeping Hibbert. I can see why you're concerned with Billings. Clearly, he's dished up a couple of stinkers, but... I just think he's been a victim of what's an extremely out of form St Kilda side. I would think that you don't know if they'll bounce back, but I'm just a massive Billings fan that I'm prepared to keep the faith and, and I'm sure there's probably a couple more pressing issues in your side to deal with, but understandably so. If you are looking to get rid of him, well, maybe Walters or McLean could be really good options. Um, Little Robbo. Scored 2,304, which hurts my average and brings me to 63rd on the rankings. Oh, mate, how are you managing, pal? You must be tearing your hair out, mate. You're going nicely. Nothing wrong with uh, 2,300 there, mate. Going very well. Good stuff. Billings is killing me. Only real slip-up so far. Could be a trade because he's looking to stink it up. 
and down heaps in price. Well, yeah, look, I just talked about keeping Billings, but man, if I was in your position, yeah, I, I'd be very tempted to trade him. When you're in the top 100, I could only imagine your willingness to get probably what is only only one that's really letting you down. So I could understand why in your situation you might to try and you know really push further up the rankings. I mean, you're clearly in the hunt at the moment, but yeah, generally speaking, I'd be patient. Uh, moving on to clutch, should I bench Finlayson or Murray for Sicily? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I would bench Murray, I think, as good as he was last week. I think Finlayson, over the journey of this season so far, has shown more consistency and I think is more likely to give you an 80+. plus. Where Murray, potentially, you know, he's a guy who relies on having the ball fed to him and then he darts off and he's extremely impressive. But yeah. I would be going Murray on the bench. Talk too much. I think we might need to toss Billings, not getting midfield time, and Saints are going shit ass. Yeah, look, there's clearly a fair bit of hate coming Billings' way, and it's understandable. I mean, he's struggling, he's letting us down, so I can see why the heat is coming his way. And he says, he's got a couple of comments here. I went with out Billings in Henry, out Fogarty in McLean. And he says, if Fogarty gets a game, I'll trade Brayshaw holding Ryan for Jack Higgins. Yeah, well, look, you're probably going to rethink that, aren't you? Because Higgins has been dropped and Fogarty's come in, so that might um, change things up. And then he goes on to say, also, I have some trades in mind. I would like your opinion. I'm tossing Billings. I could trade Billings and Brayshaw for Walters and Hogan, or Billings and Fogarty for McLean and Hogan. So he's pretty keen on bringing Hogan in. The only real differences there are, you know, Billings is going and Hogan's coming in. It's basically, you know, Brayshaw versus Fogarty and Walters versus McLean. Um, given given Fogarty's coming to the side, that makes it a far more even balance. The two premium guys, extremely tough to split. I would probably slightly lean towards McLean. I think he's um, shown real great midfield time. As has Walters to an extent, but he is a bit more forward too, and I think the, the Dockers will struggle at times, and I, I just like the role McLean is playing. That's a marginal, marginal thing. It, it's tough to split Brayshaw and Fogarty, so I'd go with option number two, mate, but, you know, we're talking the finest of fine details in terms of splitting Walters and Fogarty, both looking really good, um, Walters and McLean, sorry. So, yeah. It's, it's splitting hairs on that one, mate. I think both are fairly reasonable trades. To be fair, I wouldn't be absolutely sold on Hogan just yet, but he is in great form, so understandable. Killer Creed, I scored 2,165. He goes on to say he had Dusty as captain when he had Mitchell and Fife also in there. Yo killed him with the 27 points. Um, I think he just had a stinker, mate. I don't believe he was injured. He also had Jack Graham on the field, who is consistently scoring like 30 or 40. So, yeah, definitely a few things to have a look at there, mate. And his questions are, he's got a few. If Ryan is out, will it be a huge blow? It will be a huge blow for me, and I'll be relying on Fogarty to get recalled. Well, he did, mate, so that's good. Or else I will have a zero in the forward line. If this does happen and Fogarty isn't recalled, should I trade or just cop the zero? Yeah, well, that... That question's probably been answered for you with the teams, mate. He's come in, so you'll be pleased with that. Uh, should I trade Kane Lambert this week or give him one more chance to get a decent score? He's only been scoring around 60 or 70 all season. I have 135k in the bank. Yeah, I'd be flicking him, mate. I think he's really struggling and, and just playing more of a bit part role. Doesn't seem to be producing the numbers that we saw in the back end of last season. I'm not sure what he dropped to, but with 135k, I'm sure you're still within reach of someone like McLean or Walters and, and those likes. So I'd be going with one of those guys in great form. Number three, okay, for some stupid reason, I have four mid forwards in my forward line and zero mid forwards in my midfield. Do you think I should try and trade in the mid forward into my midfield soon? Um, I don't think it's an absolute necessity. I mean, I, I think you should be trading players in on their scoring and, and money-making potential rather than their dual position. And if the dual position happens to favour you, then that's great. But I wouldn't seek one out, you know. If there is a guy that, you know, you're weighing up between two guys and, and you're 50-50, then, of course, you might then choose 
the uh, dual position player to allow you that flexibility. But I wouldn't be sacrificing, you know, going a lesser player just so you can manoeuvre a few guys. I mean, I think I'm in the same boat at the moment, mate. I mean, I think there'll be a few people. Dual position things are just, it's nice to have that flexibility, but not something you should just seek out mid-season. I think we've got to make trades on their merits. And if it works out nicely and allows you to be flexible, then that's even better. But yeah, obviously have that as something you bring into the conversation rather than a priority. So thanks for the questions, mate. Um, Spaceman had an awful week, scored 2089 and dropped down to 33k. Uh, bugger, mate. That's, um, that is a tough week, mate. Really flat with Billings at the moment, so tempted to trade him out for McLean. But I learned my lesson last year that trades are gold, holding everyone this week. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Uh, Luke Davis, Uniac, Brayshaw, and Ryan on the chopping block next week for Higgins. Yeah, fair call, mate. And you'll be disappointed to see Higgins dropped out of the side. But yeah, I mean, trades absolutely are gold. And I think, yeah, that's, as I say, be patient with your premiums unless there is injury concern or positional change. I mean, that's, I think, when the goalposts change, then I think our theories can change a little bit. But generally speaking, if we spend all preseason on a guy that we think is going to be a premium, Sometimes we've just got to ride that roller coaster in the wave a little bit in the hope that they do turn it around like we believe in them. But if there is an injury concern or a bit of a change of position, as I mentioned with Bond, then all of a sudden maybe that makes a bit of a different call on that one. So thanks for your comment, mate. Um, Hayden Reynolds, 2,316, top 2%. Great stuff. Laughed when I saw Salem score. Of course he turns up now. Yeah, no, spot on, mate. And you're flying, so good stuff there. Um, yeah, let me know how you go next week. Hopefully you can um, even go better and, and work in that top 1%. And big old crumb, Ablett, with a few crying faces. You and me both, mate. I don't even have him, but as a Cats man, I was extremely disappointed. So, yeah, there's no hammy that Gary Ablett does now that's a couple of weeks. They're always going to be at least four, probably five. They'll be cautious with him. Ben Leonard had the worst score I've had in a few years, 2002. All my premiums scored 90 odd with my VC on Crips, ended up putting the C on Martin. Only players over 120 for me were Cornelio and Savage with Gorns 117. Yeah, that's a tough week, mate. So I feel for you. I mean, we all have them. We all have them from time to time. I could be in for one this week. I mean, Kelly's out. I've got, you know, a couple of blokes are out of form. So, you know, it, it can easily happen, but uh, I'm sure you'll bounce back this week. Sluggy, again, got Liam Ryan, likely has to go for 10 to 12 weeks, have Langdon, very likely Stevenson out with the Pies adding players, then he just lists his team, got 16k in the salary, well, yeah, I mean, I'm doing this pretty much straight off the bat, mate, so I haven't really had time to have a look at your side, but, um, you know, obviously, you're right, I think Liam Ryan, extended period, clearly, as I mentioned in the weekend preview, maybe someone like Jack Henry, but just quickly looking at your side you've got Bont, no Cornelio so you're in a similar position to me you've got Kelly as well um, so very similar to me I'd be looking at you know potentially finding Cornelio into your side you've also got Howe and Hibbard so potentially two out of form guys although I can't remember what Howe scored the other week so um, maybe a couple of guys you might want a correctional trade you might not but yeah definitely try and bring Henry in would be be my opinion um, hope you have a good week, mate. Jack Dawson, you said to hold Billings and that also he will drop in price dramatically most likely. What's your plan if he keeps scoring poorly and drops to 400k or less? What if there is no decent people to trade to once he hits that price? As in, why not trade now to someone similar price who's scoring considerably well? You know, the likes of Petrarca, Akers, Hogan. I've watched him closely this year and he just doesn't look as damaging as last year. No, it's a fair point, mate. I mean, it all comes down to opinion and, and faith and what else is going into your side. Clearly, we're hoping he bounces back, but he may not. He may well. And if he does continue to drop, then, yeah, all of a sudden we've got a bit of a problem on our hands. I mean, I'd like to think we wouldn't let him get to 400k or less. You'd, you know, he might get to 430, 440, but, gee, you'd think if he didn't perform this week, then, gee whiz, yeah, we've got a lot of problems. But... Yeah, it is it's a tough one. I mean, it's a good point you raise. I mean, why would he magically just turn it around? Well, you know, sometimes players just do and clubs do. One week they look awful, next week they're back. So they're premiums for a reason. 
they deserve a bit more faith than a couple of weeks. You know, he had one bad score the other week. An 80 is not awful. It's not terrible. He's really had just one stinker. So I think it's fair that we give him a bit of time. If you're in the position, as I said with a fella earlier in the video, who's really only got Billings to worry about, then yeah, you would probably trade him. But when I'm looking at my side, and maybe you're doing similar, mate, you know, I'm looking at Bont, I'm looking at Wingard, I've got Liam Ryan who's on the bench, I've got Josh Kelly. You know, Billings is probably a guy who's just not in the top two or three big problems in my team at the moment. So I think that sometimes decides it for you. I mean, Billings going out would be a bit of a luxury trade, you know, a guy that is out of form that you can afford to offload to someone else because there's nothing else pressing. But for most people, certainly me, um, there's probably some other issues that we need to deal with. So, and guys that could potentially drop even more. So that's probably something that comes into consideration for me at least. GJ's Supercoach 101, 2,313. Nice work, mate. A very good week for you. Finally cracked the top 10,000 overall, so happy for that. I'm thinking Canelo for Parker, and if I have to trade Ryan, I will. Also, I'm prepared to give Billings one more week, but if he doesn't turn up against the Cats, he drops in price when I could potentially get Menegola. Who's up on who's on the up? Yeah, no, that's that is fair call. I mean, Menegola is looking much better last week. Clearly, that's no coincidence that he plays a bit better without Duncan in there, and, and Ablett won't be there too for the next few weeks. I mean, it allows him to get into the guts a bit more, so he'll benefit from that. Um, yeah, so obviously a really good week for you, mate. Obviously, Parker wasn't as good last week, but I. From memory, his first couple of weeks were pretty reasonable, weren't they? So don't don't pull the trigger too quickly on that one, mate, if he's going okay. But, uh, yeah, I think Keneally will be a really popular inclusion. There's no doubt about that. So I can't blame you there. So, you, Mark, could we see Tommy Mitchell in danger, provided he averages like he did last year, above the 700k mark starting next year, gets tagged and doesn't have a worry in the world? Yeah, no, that's... um. They definitely could. There's no doubt about that. Two of the best players in the comp, mate. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they could most definitely feature, you know, averaging 125 to 135 respectively. So somewhere in there, they both could do. There's, there's absolute possibility of that. Luke Bauer, who's the best Liam than replacement? I think that's Liam Ryan replacement. Jack Henry, Radaglia, Willie Rioli, or Mitch Croden. Yeah, I'll talk about this one in the weekend preview. I'm definitely on Jack Henry, and almost in order of what you've listed them. I would say certainly Henry, then Radaglia, then Croden, then Rioli would be, you know, if that helps, that would be the order I'd be ranking them. Tim Tunia, thinking of pulling the trigger on Billings, he's let me down. Yeah, I've mentioned a few times throughout this video, mate, so certainly I'm keeping the faith. I understand why people are getting frustrated, so hopefully you've heard me touch on that one a few times already in this video. If Ryan is out long term, who are some good forward rookies? Sorry for the ignorance from Felix J. No, no dramas, mate. Jack Henry, as I mentioned a couple of times and in the weekend preview, he would be my option and just a couple of questions ago we discussed a few of the other guys Radaglia, Rioli, Croden etc so but certainly I'd endorse Henry and I expand a little bit on that in the weekend preview it's Breezy B Liam Ryan to Jack Henry good stuff mate I like it and he asks Jack Billings to Robbie Gray slash Toby McLean or save some cash and go with Blake Akers slash Josh Caddy or James Sicily um I like the Toby McLean option no doubt about that. Don't like, I don't really like any of that second crew. I know Akers is going well and he's looking really good and been a shining light in a poor Saints side, but, you know, he'd be a bit risky still. Sicily, still slightly risky, unsure of exactly how he's going to go. One good score, one bad score. Definitely no to Josh Caddy. So, yeah, if you wanted a straight-up trade to Billings, I've discussed him a bit. I'm holding him, but if you did want to get rid of him, McLean would be a great option. Tommy C, great matchup, Shorty. I am if it ain't Boke. Oh, good stuff. Was very lucky to pip you by a point in the end, did you, mate? I actually didn't see that exact league. So there you go. Nicely done. Got a little lucky with Danger being scaled up by two. <laughs> really, how about that? You must have been fairly tense there. Nice little scaling job. Getting the job done. Well, yeah, no, nah, nicely done, mate. Good stuff. Alistair McNeil. Hey, Shorty. Should I trade or hold on Wingard? 
Yeah, I'm in a similar boat there, mate. And it probably depends what else you've got on your plate. Um, for me, as I've mentioned, I think most will already be using one trade on Liam Ryan. And we can't really hold off on that because there's guys going up in value, uh, value that we need to attend to and get them in. So that really leaves us one other thing to do. Is that going to be Bont? Is that going to be Billings? Is that going to be Wingard? For me, it's Cornelio. I mean, the main other priority is Cornelio. Therefore, the question answers itself. It's Bont and Pally. So for me, and maybe for you, I'd be holding him. I think he's a bit like Billings. You know, they haven't been great, but they've dished up one ton each in round one. Then... A poor score of less than 60 and a mediocre score between 80 and 90. So I know they've been frustrating and not what we would have wanted. We'd love all 90 plus scores, but they really only dished up one howler, one mediocre score and a good one. So that's pretty much my reasoning too. I would say to answer your question, hold. And yeah, for me, if you want to know how I come to that conclusion, Liam Ryan's a must trade. I think Cornelio's a must get. Therefore, Bont is the answer to that. So that's where I get to myself in that conclusion. Where are we? There we are. Lachlan, Andrew Walsh. Hey, Shorty. I'm thinking of selling Ryan and Josh Kelly for acres. I oh, must have seen the teams, clearly. And Toby McLean. What do you think about this? And also, should we get rid of Billings? He's going shocking. And also, your thoughts on Yo. Should we be keeping him? Thanks. Um, yeah, no, a few questions there, mate. Thanks for that. Um, let's have a look. Well, yeah, clearly your understanding on, on the Ryan front. Um, how long's Kelly out for? I don't know if you know that or not, but if he's out for a bit, then yeah, I understand the trade. If he's only your one weaker or sort of even one or two, I'd be keeping him. So yeah, I, I definitely like the McLean option, as mentioned. Billings, I've spoken about a fair bit. As for Yo, I would be holding him. I know the 27 sucks, but yeah, look, if, if, you, if you're not sold on him being a top six defender like maybe you once were in the preseason, then yeah, now's the time to offload him. But I'd like to think that was just an aberration and most of the time we will see some good scores. Maybe someone might know a little bit better. Is he struggling with an injury? Is there an eagle in there? Doesn't seem to be playing as much midfield as maybe we would like, but he still is finding a way to ton up in the previous two weeks. So, look, I would be in the leaning towards the keeping him camp, but um, I can understand the frustration, but my my thought would be keep. Um, Tyler, rank 66 overall. Good stuff. Got to get rid of Billings this week. Can't have Primo scoring 79 and 54 back-to-back. -back. Yeah, and, and that's where, like I said earlier in the video, in certain circumstances, I can see why. I mean, if you're right up there, you don't want to be going in with an out-of-form guy. Clearly, if you're right up there, not much is going wrong in your side. So I can see why. Billings, probably your only worry. Yeah, I can understand why in that situation you'd turf him. Um, Tyre Gaming scored 18-15. Goodness me, mate. That's not a good week. I hope you bounce back this weekend. Archie Prime scored 2,333. That's great stuff, mate. Not sure what to do with Billings and Hibbard. When will you be trying to get Titch in? Um, yeah, look, I, I'd probably be a hold to those two guys, as I've discussed already. And, yeah, Tommy Mitchell, I'll be trying to get in as soon as I can. <laughs> you know, it's fair to say. I mean, ideally, he slows up in some way, shape, or form. Um, and you can get him around 650 or 600 if he really slowed up a bit, you know. It doesn't take too much to, to fall from that height. I mean, even just a couple of weeks of between 90 and 110 can do it. But yeah, clearly I won't be getting Mitchell in for a little while. Just going to have to monitor his price, I guess. And um, Etax is the go. capable of producing good numbers this year? Absolutely is. I wouldn't be trading him in off the bat. You'd have to see how he goes the first couple of weeks. I mean, he's back now. But yeah, I'd be looking to see how he goes over the first couple of weeks. But definitely is a capable player, there's no doubt about that. Trent Campbell, is Merritt worth getting at such a low price? He could go well. Yeah, he's definitely worth getting in, but I'd wait a bit too. I mean, he scored 95 and 53 of his last two. So he's still going to drop more often than not. I mean, he's probably still got maybe one or two price drops, really. I mean, with that 53. So definitely keep him on your radar, as I said in the weekend preview. Get him in maybe round six or something like that. But yeah, he'll plummet, he'll bottom out, then we can snap him up. So keep an eye on him. 
Um, Splash Bros, should I trade Merritt? Um, no, I, I wouldn't be trading him. I know he's struggling, but as I said with that question there, I think people will be looking to get him in in a few weeks. So as a bloke who already has him, I'd be holding him. I know he's struggling, you know, he's copying a bit more attention, but I think you've just got to, particularly now that he's dropped so, so far, you've got to hold now, I think. If you were going to trade, it would have been after those two weeks because you knew with that 17 or whatever it was when he got knocked out, you knew he was going to drop significantly no matter what. So that would have been the time to pull the trigger. Now that you've gone through that, I think you've just got to, ride that storm really you got to get through it and, and hopefully he bounces back so um yeah definitely and sorry i think um oh no it's another question from etuck sorry mate who is getting the bailey banfield tag this week kelly canelio or shield yeah definitely and we've got to look out for the ben jacobs tag, uh, tag too that's back and that's certainly going to hurt a few coaches and players i i would reckon he would go to shield i think i mean given the kelly's out i think shield's probably Slightly more outside and a bit easier to tag, where Cornelio just wins so much of his own ball, tough and in and under, tougher to tag a guy like that. Thanks for your question, mate. Adam Hoagie, anyone know how long Ablett will be out for? I'm sure you probably know by now, mate, but yeah, at least a month. I mean, a Gary Ablett hammy is always, at this stage of his career, going to be fairly lengthy. They're going to be cautious, so yeah, it's a bit worse than the one he had... Um, pre-season they said so i think he missed a couple of weeks of training so yeah minimum three you'd have to say you'd have to say minimum month really so he'll be out for a while definitely got to trade him max thompson 300k and i need a fort well who are you trading out mate um if you're trading out a guy that's capable of getting to a premium i presume you are given you've got 300k in the bank then i'd be looking at you know heaney if you haven't got him already McLean, Walters, you know, Petrarca if you can't reach some of those other guys. So they'd all be options I'd be looking at. Thanks for the question. Warwick Murray scored 2,252. Did all right, made no trades and dropped to 717. Hoping Ryan, uh, Ryan good as Fogarty. Not sure exactly what's going on there. Might not get back in. Oh, in regards to Fogarty, you might not get back in for a while. But he does, mate. So there you go. You'll be pleased with that. So he's back in the side. And yeah, you're going extremely well, mate. Top 1,000. Hopefully you can stay there. You're clearly going very nicely. So good luck to you this weekend. Hopefully you can stay right up there. Seb Franco. Thanks, mate. Good to see a question from you. Scored 2,231 for me this week, Shorty. Very happy considering I had Billings, Zach Merritt, and Sicily sitting out. Cornelio had, and Captain Tom Mitchell have been incredible for me. So far, very happy with those picks. Yeah, definitely, mate. They are very solid picks. Fife was great. Rookies did well, although some may be moved on this week. I started Luke Davies Uniac. I liked him pre-drafting, watched an under-18s game of his where he kicked five as well as 20 odd touches to secure best on ground. Yeah, I know. It's Sometimes it's funny, isn't it? Like, as good as these youngsters are, it doesn't always translate to AFL scoring in the first month. It's not easy to do. I mean... I can understand that pick. I mean, I'd, I'd definitely hold on to him. I mean, I'm sure you are. But, um, yeah, he's a, definitely a very damaging player. Seb goes on. I had expected him to be a 60 to 70 player. He's pretty lacklustre at the moment. He'll be moved on this week. Oh, you're moving on. Fair enough. I jumped the gun there, mate. Fair enough. So what option are you going to there? I'll, I'll be interested to know. Ed Richards looks good, although it might be tough to get him in. Hibbard somewhat redeemed himself, still didn't play well as a thought. He was very lucky to crack 80 plus, but hopefully he'll bounce back. Yeah, definitely, mate. Hopefully you can make some coin from Davies Uniac, and uh, yeah, hopefully Hibbard can bounce back too. I think there's a lot of frustrated coaches in that camp. There's no doubt about that. Um, has it gaming? Oh my god, I've finally got a higher season rank than Shorty, even if it's only by 300. Now, nicely done, mate. I hope you're going well. Better than me, obviously, so nicely done. Um, Kelly Nagram had a had a mare, Shorty, after a solid two weeks, which you have to expect will happen from time to time. So tumbled in the rankings to around 8,000. It does happen time to time. You just can't help it sometimes, but... Um, 
She goes on, Sav, certainly paid off for you for Superstar's debut. I've shown Savage, yep, well done, sticking your guns there, thank you. Although Canelo still outscored him, I might add. Yes, yes, I know, I'm well aware. So many primos are letting us down this season, but at least we have a core group of rookies who are getting the job done. Yeah, that's definitely right, I mean, that'll be great when they really beef up and help us upgrade. One man who is getting it done week in, week out is Tom Mitchell, who is proving a must-have in all fantasy formats. Even more so than last year, he's improved his efficiency and effectiveness this season, which is reflected at even greater supercoach output. So the question for Nonos is how do you get Danger in, but how do you get Titch in? Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a fair question. It's one question I'm now scrambling for an answer. Yeah, and I sort of uh, touched on that one earlier too. And yeah, I mean, all we can do is sit and hope that at some point this level just dips even for two to three weeks and he can come back to about 650k or something really 600k whatever it is you know that's about all we can hope so at some point he will drop off it's just a matter of will he string together a few hundred you know low hundreds or even a 90 you know will they be combined or will it be a 95 then a 160 you know and it's really about when we get those scores that are somewhat low in a row and therefore they drop a little bit more, a bit like what Dangerfield last did, uh, did last year. I think it was, I can't remember exactly, but our three-week period was, you know, I think 90, 110, 102, and, and it really culminated nicely to get, get him in at a lower price. Um, nearly through all the questions, so thanks, guys. Um, Fever, VFX, hey, Shorty, thoughts on Jack McRae as a solid POD. He's averaging 130 plus, and his lowest score is 120. With Bont and Pally, like you were saying, playing forward, this could open the door for McRae to generate more points. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's always been a ball magnet, hasn't he? I mean, you'd be you'd be fairly brave to pick him as a POD, but I mean, I couldn't argue against him. I mean, he's flying, as you said. He he's going to get plenty of midfield time. He is a guy who can just find the ball at will, and he is a guy who accumulates and just racks up the pill. We've seen him do it for many years so certainly he's a guy that uh yeah absolutely if you're feeling like taking a bit of a risk then yeah he's a guy who's absolutely in form jim cuddle i feel your pain shorty worst year i've had i carried robbie gray even though he wasn't playing round one to cover or oh, over chad wingard wingard is a look at me player <laughs> likes the glory not the work Robbie Gray is still a good price after only two games. Yeah, nah, fair call. Robbie Gray has looked really good. I mean, he's really showing some really good form, so you'll be pleased that you held on to him. Nicely done. Um, not sure how to say that one, but um, Souter, 2468. Shorty, what do I do with Elliot Yo? I was thinking Yo to Savage and Dow to Caulfield. Yeah, I mean, I understand if you want to offload him, and I think he'll bounce back. I think he deserves... A bit of faith obviously had a bit of a shock i mean i watched the game but when you're watching a geelong game or whoever you barrack for you're really focusing more on your team and, and just where the game's at you're not you know i wasn't really watching yo as much so he's not getting as much midfield time it seems but yeah look i couldn't argue with savage he's going really well probably yeah coffee looked great didn't he but maybe just maybe just wait and see how he goes again this week and, and also dow you know he's going okay you know, he's probably going to go slightly up again. He's not raging up, but look, it couldn't hurt to hold that one off for the moment unless you absolutely have to do that to get the coin, which I presume is why you've tied those two in. But yeah, Savage is looking great. He'd be a really solid selection. And finally, Alexander Twaddle scored 2,286 with Dusty as captain. Worried about merit. Should I keep him or trade him for someone like Michael Walters? I'd be keeping him. I'm certainly looking at bringing him in when he does really bottom out, I think he'll bounce back. I know he's struggling, maybe with, you know, getting knocked out, it can rattle you for a few weeks. And also, he's copping a bit more attention these days. So, I can understand your concern, but I think we should back him in. He's a proven premium, so I would be backing him in. So, I hope you do, and I hope he repays that faith over the next couple of weeks. But, um, look, thanks for all the questions, guys. There's certainly a lot there. And, look, I must say... I, I've been umming and ahhing with this Q&A stuff. It, I'll, I'll see how I go over the next few weeks. Um, it, it is a bit difficult with these bigger videos later in the week and just with the time I have on offer to do them. I'm sort of floating the idea of potentially picking out a handful because as you can see, a lot of these were just talking about billings and 
you know, a few others. So even though there's a lot of questions, a lot of people are thinking the same thing. So maybe I could condense that down. So that's probably something I, I will be looking at doing. Well, I'll just have to wait and see. But uh, look, thanks again. I'll be back over the uh, weekend. So stay tuned for that. Hope you have a good week in Supercoach and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.